Hey everybody, welcome back to this old trike. Today we are going to be going over the differences between the 1985, the 1986, and the 1987 250SX. So join me now and we will go through all those details together. Introducing the electric start, reverse geared, shaft driven, all out fun machine, the ATC 250SX. The 250SX bridges the gap between all the right features and all-out sport. Its powerful new 246cc engine, along with full suspension front and rear, let it run with the Roughnecks. and its light and nimble handling make it really fun to ride. Any place, any time. Its power-packed engine has the muscle to take on the toughest hills, while its five-speed transmission, automatic clutch, and lightweight shaft drive keep this ATC going across all kinds of terrain. Sealed drum brakes, front and rear, bring the 250SX to a smooth, sure stop. The 250 SX. Performance and handling. Comfort and convenience. The 250 SX. The ATC with everything. All right. Today we have out. My 1985, my 1986, and my 1987 ATC 250SX. The mullet of the Honda ATV family. Business up front, party in the rear, sorta. But these were a great mix of uh, work and play. So you could use this on your farm, as uh, that commercial showed, you could take this out on the trails and hammer. Uh, it's not, you know, the power that you would get from a 350X, but they were a great machine. And we're gonna go through the details here and even discuss a little bit of what you can expect if you buy a, a, a beat up machine. This is better than some, worse than others, but we'll, we'll do some comparisons, show you some evidence of people that have done some repairs or tried to give a facelift when they they probably shouldn't have. so here we go so all the leaves are brown and the sky is blue now but 
typically gray the past week. But we're still out here messing with three wheelers. And I'll go in order and I'll quickly tell the story of where each one of these came from and then talk about the differences and their current status and what the plans are. So this is a first year 1985 all red black seat ATC 350X. This was new. Um, Honda was transferring the utility machines over to shaft starting in 84. So this is kind of the second year of doing shaft on their utilities. Uh, Big Red had shaft at this point and was also a 250 motor. Not actually a 250cc, I believe it's 246. I'll confirm that. But this machine I traded, uh, I traded for. I had a 85 350X for sale that we can pop a picture of so you can see what what I traded for this. I did not uh, just do a straight trade. The guy added cash and I forget the amounts that were done, but it was a lot less than what they were going for now. And I was quite pleased. This is a pretty clean machine. Obviously, uh, tires are not original. These would be original tires. We're gonna talk more about those, but just mention them now. It had the rear rack on it. Did not have a front rack or a headlight guard, but I have a front rack and headlight guard that I'm gonna put on this and those tires. And I have a third, but I couldn't find it. So this will be all original shortly, but the guy came to me, um, picked up his 85 350X and was happy about that. I think he added maybe 1400 in cash, which it was a good deal. I was happy with that. It's hard to look back at what you've sold machines for and what they're valued at now and going for now and, and not grimace a little bit, but uh, it is what it is. It was good at the time and that's all that matters. This is the second 85SX that I've, I've had. I had one before this that I got pretty reasonably, 800 or $850. Not as nice as this, but it did have a front rack, headlight guard and rear rack, which those things are pretty sought after at this point. And I uh, ended up trading that straight up to my buddy Joe from Poughkeepsie and uh, the one I traded for was a, a 1980 185, ATC 185, the one year only kind of big 185. So this is my second machine. It's a lot cleaner than the, the first, and we're going to make it even cleaner. It's got wear on it. You can see some wear marks on the tank, little chatter there, some, some scuffs, but crack free fenders, patina. You know, I'd like to clean up those rims before I put those other tires on them. Make that pretty nice. But moving on to 1986. This machine, it took me, it was harder for me to find an 86 than it was an 85 or even an 87. I think I've owned more 87 250 SXs than, than the other two. But this machine came from west of me in Rome, New York. Uh, the gentleman that I bought this from, he I believe he had a, a 110 for sale on Craigslist. And in the background of one of the pictures of the 110 was this SX. So I wrote him, I said, hey, beautiful 110. Would that SX in the background happen to be for sale? And he said, no, not now at least, but maybe down the road. And I stayed in contact with him and just checked in with him and was a nice guy. And eventually, you know what happened? It was for sale and I was happy to buy it, and it came with a, a matching fake Honda line trailer. I'll overlay a picture so you can see what that looked like. But the, uh, the golf cart hubcaps were on it then, they're still on it now. I'll say their days are, are numbered though, because we did obtain some, some takeoff, at least rear rims and tires from, these are from actually an 86, TRX 200 SX. They share the same tires and rims. So these will go on the back. I'll, I'll figure out what'll go on the front. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. These leaves are crunchy. Now onto the 87. So this is the lowest production 
number of all the SX models as are all 87s of any given model. You know, 87 Big Reds are the lowest production number. Well, that's not true because 88s are the lowest, but we'll say they're lower than their 86 and 85 counterparts. The uh, 125M is the lowest number, the 200X is the lowest number, and, and as is with the 87250SX. Very, very similar to the 86, but subtle differences. This came from a gentleman out in Rhode Island. I drove three hours, three and a half hours out to, to go get this from him. It was a little misrepresented when I got there. Um, the pictures didn't show a lot of sun checking in the fenders. You'll notice that these fenders don't have any sun checking because I've swapped them out. And if you have a problem with me swapping parts out, that's, that's tough because uh, I wanna make a nice machine for myself and I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I'm not parting things out, so don't get bent out of shape because everything's going somewhere. There's a master plan. But this, uh, this came with the front rack. This is not the normal headlight guard. I don't know if that's Honda line or something else. Normally they, they look like this. This is 100% Honda line with the insert that screws in from the back. This one I think might be aftermarket, but this is what I was excited about, the Speedo. And I talked to the guy I bought this from. This was not original to this machine. He put it on. So it's got an original front tire. It's got some dry rot in it. And I fooled myself when I bought this machine. I looked at those tires and I go, oh, it's got the puncture resistant tires on the rear. This is great, but I didn't look close enough because those aren't the puncture resistant tires. If you look quick, you might, you might trick yourself, but these are new old stock XA801s that will eventually go on this, the, the rear of this machine. These are Dunlop 2211.8s, KT487. That's probably a Yamaha tire or a tire that appeared on a Yamaha. Doesn't go on this though. Neat looking tire, I can dig it, but doesn't go on this. This is, I think, the third 87 I've bought. I had one that was similar to this, not quite as nice. I bought from a, a friend out in Indiana at a trike fest. We met up there and did the deal. And before that, I bought one with a little help from my friend John down, down near Poughkeepsie. That was uh, my first one. and. So I've had three of these, two of these, and two 85s. Only 185 now, 187, and two 86s. This is my, my turd. I honestly have not ridden this machine much. I bought it because the price was right and it had a super trap on it. And I had plans to turn this into a custom color machine. This was a Trek Fest deal bought in advance and then delivered to Trike Fest and picked up. It's always fun to do that because you can get some, some cool machines from a distance. But now let's talk about some of the differences. So, in 1985, the ATC 250SX was a new model. Uh, they had the big red in 84 before this, that was a 200 CC in the US, it switched to 250. And this was the, the brother to the big red. Same motor, basically, except I'm told, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the differential and the transmission gearing is different by one tooth. This has a, a taller, gearing because it has a smaller rear tire so these came with 22 inch tires on it where the big red came from with 25 inch tires so the gearing on the big red is lower but that's compensated for with the big tires these get away with a taller gearing because of uh, the smaller tires but the top ends are totally interchangeable the motors on the 85 86 87 are black sx uh, big reds are silver. The headlight 
is the same lens as a 85 250R. They are interchangeable. They they got wider in 86 as did the 86 250R headlight. So these are interchangeable, the lens with an 86 250R, 87 also. These are great all around machines. They, they're the perfect balance, I'd say, of power and, and what you need for, for work. Racks were optional. There were aftermarket racks that do not have these handy dandy rack knobs that allow you to remove it. They hinge on, on the grab bar and fold back to allow you to remove the fenders. The only thing is they have to drill holes through the plastic. So if you've got nice plastic and you want to put a rack on and it's, you know, this, this year, you know, that's a big commitment. That's a, a big gulp when you drill that hole because if your fenders are nice at least. These came with PV 301 tires and we've had a discussion about this. If you haven't seen my 200X video, I made a mistake and misspoke in that video that these are the same tires that came on the 200X. They, they will fit, they look very similar, they are interchangeable, but they are not the same. And I will, uh, I don't know if I cleared that up. I think I did clear that up in a different video. You'll have to watch all my videos to find out where I clear that up. I do somewhere though. So, um, red tank red headlight bezel, black seat, are some of the defining characteristics of the 85. Black fork boots, no shield on the headpipe, no secondary shield. You'll see it's on the 86. And that helps to prevent this phenomenon where your headpipe gets a little hot and when you turn it gets close and you get a little deformation. My buddy Greg Jr. makes little rubber covers that go over this. I've got some. I should pop one on there. So these are kickstart, backup. Electric start is a nice feature. Tow hitches were optional. I have a tow hitch that I will put on this. There were variations of tow hitch. That's the no tow hitch variation. This is the Honda line tow hitch variation. And then there's a lot of these out there for aftermarket. So you could leave one open for trailers that have a pin. You could put a ball in one of those and have the best of both worlds. Let's look in the trunk. Rider Sport, Ithaca, New York. Look at that. Anybody from Ithaca? Leave a comment if you're from Ithaca. What is that? A little gasket for maybe a gas can? What other fun facts about this? Obviously you can see the decals are different. Each one is unique. I personally like the white tank and blue decal configuration on the 86. That is my favorite. The red is okay. This tank is all original. This is a factory uh, missing paint mark. No, I'll probably touch that up. I don't want to repaint this. I'd rather leave it a little imperfect and have it be original with original decals. This tank has been restored. I personally don't like these decals. They, they've retracted a little bit so you can see a little adhesive showing that's now picked up dirt. So. A project for another day will be to heat those up and peel them off. So 86, basically the same as 85, except for cosmetics. So the fork boots go to blue, seat covers blue, tank is white, headlight shell is white. I don't know what material these headlight shells were made of, but they are known to sun check. So if you're buying one of these and it doesn't have the correct headlight bezel and you want it to be all original. That's going to be tough because uh, they are very hard to find. 
and if you find one it's usually been on a machine that's been out in the field and it's all spider webbed and sun checked and doesn't look really look that great uh how's this one that one's pretty good too so what i'm sure also happened from 85 to 86 because it happened on the the big red is confirming yes the swing arm is different so you'll notice this swing arm configuration flares it's wider here and goes into where it mounts at the uh, at the frame blue I'm sorry black shock spring this has a red shock spring because this has been replaced with a 300 EX rear shock you'll notice the swing arm does not flare this is more of a straight configuration, so that allowed them to change the brake drum setup. And that brake drum is more uh, resistant to water penetration, so it saves your, your brake pads, your brake shoes, rather. Okay. 87 has the same setup as the 86, and factory... Uh, correct is the blue shock spring that almost has like a purplish tint to it in real life I don't know if that's coming through on the video but I believe this machine had a little bit of a restoration on it I'm noticing that's been changed that's should be like that they actually still sell those so I can make that correct but like this grab bar was powder coated they're not powder coated from the factory. They're, I think they're black oxide plated or something like that. But it's still a nice machine. This has still got set up from uh, the parade. We had these in the 4th of July parade. That's in a video if you haven't seen that. Maybe take a look. But another common change from 86 to 87. This was also on the uh, Big Reds. They changed the starter gear setup to, uh, they changed the ratio, made that more robust. It's a stronger setup, but you'll notice this has a teardrop look where the 86 and also 85 have a kind of oval look. So if you are looking at a motor laying on somebody's shop floor or a frame with no tank on it you know no way to tell what's what that's a good way to tell look for that motor uh, also black triple trees black triple trees aluminum upper triple so 85 had the aluminum color upper triple that's common uh, a same same difference between 350X, same difference with a 250R. Uh, I'm thinking about other models. You know, 200X change, so at least those two, we'll leave that there. But fenders are interchangeable. They all mount up the same. Decals are different. Decals, I'm looking 85 or 86 to 85. They are different. The ATC on the 87 is in front. Oh, where's my finger? In front of the two. ATC is above the two there. Could these be, if the tank decals aren't factory, could these be? Let's do an inspection. I'm guessing these are not factory. So I can't, I can't say that that's a difference. These, this looks like that. That's a factory decal, this this is not. Quick side note, obviously here on my lesser nice 250SX, this decal is mostly gone, but you can see the ATC started in front of the 250, which is not how that is, so I'm pretty confident, 99.9% .9 sure that that is that's just a mirror image of that, which isn't correct. Looks like maybe 
whoever made those decals copied the, the kicker side. I didn't think that the electric start shifter side would be different, and it is. There you have it. 86, 87 have the, the head pipe extra guard there on the front, as we mentioned. <laughs> the hubcaps were optional. But that's the main differences. Not a lot of change between the years. I do believe the the clutch adjustment caps changed, but I don't have the 85 to compare it to. I know they changed on the big red, so you'll just have to take my word for it. But I think now we're gonna move into the chapter of this video where I pick these apart and tell you what I'm gonna do to them with all my free time. So in the next 10 years, this is what you might, what you might see out of my channel. And uh, here we go. One thing is for certain, you're not going to see any of that. I alluded to my plans for the 85. This is the most uh, original, clean, cleanest machine, I guess, of the three. Uh, four, I guess, if you're including the turd over there. It will have all original tires by the time I'm done with it. I'll repowder the rims so they look nice. I'll try to dress up any rash on the the wheels that might not be right. Try to make them nice. I'll put that clutch adjustment cover on. That's That bothers me. Maybe I'll try to re replace that or fill it in. I don't know. I've got a, a powder coated rear rack for this, a powder coated front rack and a powder coated headlight guard. So this will receive those. The forks have a little bit of Rust, a little bit of steel wool and WD-40 on those will work wonders. I'll pull those out and do that and uh, get this repainted so it looks nice when it goes back together. No sense putting something nice on something that isn't perfect. That will allow me to take this rack and perhaps put it on this. Uh, yes, that's the plan and here's why. Okay, this machine's a great rider, and we have ridden it quite a bit. My son, Bennett, who was just out here helping me, he helped me wipe these down so they look more presentable for all my viewers here. He was riding this last fall on mud flats, uh, which is not accessible yet this year, so haven't been able to get you any mud flat footage, mud flat footage. But he was riding, and... Uh, there's a transition where there's a beach and where he was riding, the, the ground goes up almost immediately, about a foot and a half, and he didn't see it. He was wearing some new goggles and his eyes couldn't see it, and we broke the OEM fenders. These 250SXs, because the mud flaps extend out past sometimes, they get caught on, if you wheelie bad, if you roll it, they get they get caught and this is a very common place for these to get broke and uh, he was okay he was shaken up um, didn't want to ride the rest of the day but once we realized he was good um, we checked out the machine and it sucked you know I hated to realize what happened but it's all there and I think I can weld that back together uh, from the underside I will leave the top I won't try to melt this in up here but It'll help stabilize it, and there'll be a backup set of fenders. They already had a repair. I don't know what happened here. The previous owner did that. That's a nice repair. I think that's one of those fancy plastic welding machines did that. He had a rack on it when I got it, and it was not the correct rack. I don't know what, what it was from, but it rubbed the fenders here. This is a seat I got from my pal Vinny Staffa to replace the one that was on it, which wasn't as nice. And that seat ended up going to my friend, Craig Deloria. And I felt bad because I, I did the trade with Vinny before my friend Craig bought the machine. And then he got the machine with a seat that was supposed to go to me on it. And then he was very nice to honor the trade that had been made. Uh, 
I mentioned these takeoff wheels and tires, so I will probably make this into not a rider. Uh, and when I say that, I ride all my machines. I ride this machine, I ride that machine. None of these are so nice that I'm not gonna rip across the field and do some wheelies and take them in the woods, but I'm not gonna take it out on the mud flats. So I'm gonna put time into this. The fork seals need to be replaced. Those fork boots are horrible. They look silly. Uh, I don't have OEM replacements, but I have very similar looking OEM replacements. And I can post a link in the comments to, uh, or a link in the description to show you where I, I get those from. But we're gonna clean this up and go through it, get all original tires on it, and maybe this becomes as nice as this one. New tank decals on the 86, we'll see. These fenders will be back up because I'll use these. So these are 85 fenders that are horribly dirty but they might clean up very, very nice, uh, polish up nice. You'll see they've got holes for the rack set up so I can put that other rack on the 86. So that's another machine with a rack on it. I don't think I have another front rack kicking around, but maybe one will turn up, who knows. But that's the plans for the 86. The 87, I just wanna get these, uh, these tires on the rear. Touch up that tank. This is an original tire on the front, but you'll see it's it's got the dry rot. We'll see if something pops up for the front. That's better than you know a Changshin or a Duro, in my opinion, for right now, but maybe it'll bother me down the road. And then there comes the this guy, the 86. So couple key things on this you're like my first instinct was oh the chassis is pretty clean on this maybe I should swap things over to the other 86 or or make this the nice one but then I realized wait a minute this and this should be aluminum and the bolts weren't painted from the factory you could see the bolts this thing's been painted to be cleaned up to, to look nicer than it is. This shouldn't be painted. It's a little floppy. Um, obviously the tank has been through the war. So I don't know what the plan is with this. It's got the super trap on it. I've got the trunk lid. The trunk lid came separate. Obviously these rear wheels and tires are not, are not factory. They're quite silly. But Maybe the hubcap, maybe the hubcap wheels go on this. Uh, that front max is about had it. There ain't much left in the middle, and plus they're dry rotted. So I know my friend Jim really has been badgering me to sell this. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. It's tough, you know. It's tough. It's got the headlight guard. So this is yet another slight change because that one's got, this has three, no evidence of a fourth being welded, but the 87 has one, two, see that's not even on there tight, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, this is another funny thing about this deal. Uh, me and the gentleman I bought this from, we agreed on price, we agreed on when I would pick it up. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, we agreed on when I pick it up, and then I got there. On the way, he said how he was going to swap out the headlight guard with a different one that he that he had on a different machine. So he needed to know when I was going to arrive, so he had time to do that. And I said, "Well, hold on. I agreed to buy this with the headlight guard that's on it, and I didn't want to make him feel guilty, but we had a deal." So he left it, he honored our deal, but how silly. Same thing with this. I agreed to buy this as it sits and the guy had another one next to it and he told me how this one would come. I bought it and then he said he had to get the exhaust swapped off and I wanted that super trap. I think super traps are awesome. 
I wanted a super trap. And then all of a sudden he changed the deal and said it wasn't going to come with super trap. And it was tough because I was at a distance and not dealing face to face. But as you can see, it's got the super trap on it. So I think I had to give a hundred bucks to make, make it so it stayed on it. But I think that's all we have. All I can come up with. A, a, I won't even say it's popular, but a possible modification that people do on these is they take the rear end from a a 250 uh a trx 250 and they bolt it up on one of these because you can see the swing arm on on this bolts to the outside of the frame unlike a 250 es a 250 es bolts in between the frame on the big red Oh, that's my 87, 85, 86, hmm. oh, 88, wow. So why would you put a TRX 250 rear end on your SX? It gives you a little bit longer swing arm and you can put bigger tires on it if you want, or it makes your machine longer. Other than that, people can put Meyer fenders on their machines. This is a, a Meyer front fender. Me as a collector, I prefer OEM anytime I can, but Meyer makes an outstanding product. They've been in the business forever. Jesse Meyer is a fantastic business owner and strives to provide top-notch customer support. So I can't recommend him uh, highly enough. The downsides, with Meyer, uh, and it's not because they're trying to cut corners. It's just the the manner in which they make their their product. They do a vacuum forming uh, process where these are injection molded, and I'm not going to try to teach you about the differences right now. But they can't do complex contours. Uh, that's why on a a set of Meyer 250 SX fenders, there's no trunk. There's no trunk lid. It's all just solid across here and tapered down. Better than having cracked up, you know, riveted, riveted fenders like these. Uh, but they just have their limitations. I think they're they're 250R fenders. They're uh, liquid cooled. 85, 86 fenders are beautiful. Uh, there's only. Only way I can tell from a distance is if you can look underneath and see the uh, the lack of OEM that OEM wire. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, but they're very nice. 350Xs have are pretty recognizable when they're Meyer, but a lot of custom colors. You'll see 250SXs because Jesse has uh, been so gracious enough to to provide those, and through group group orders. If you're on Honda Hoarders, uh, they'll do group orders on there from time to time. That's on Facebook. Uh, Vinny Staffa will head that up. And he's done a lot to advance the market and bring products to fruition that weren't previously available. So they do make a headlight bezel for these now. That's something that never used to be. I can't remember if it's the 85 width or the 86 width. I can't remember. Anyway, that's all I have to offer on Honda's ATC 250SX. I can start making up things, but I don't think anybody wants to, to hear that from me. So I think I might close this out. As always, guys, I thank you so much for watching. This is, uh, the information I'm giving you is information I've picked up from talking with people who know uh, over the years. I've been collecting hard for five years now and I go out of my way to learn and to memorize this information. Uh, I'm sure I've missed things. I'm sure there's things that someone knows better than I do. And if you, uh, if you want to educate us all politely, feel free to do that in the comments. 
we're going through each model showing the differences and if you uh if you haven't seen any of the other other videos on my channel make sure to go check them out give this one a like share it with all your 250sx friends don't forget to subscribe to the channel click the bell so you get all the notifications when i when i put these out which is pretty much weekly coming up soon i've got a special woodworking project that i'm going to be doing and maybe some collaborations with uh, i got a couple other three-wheeler friends that we've been talking about how we can work together to bring the best three-wheeler content to the youtube three-wheeler community and that's you guys so thank you again and i appreciate you have a fantastic weekend this old trike out